<laughs> I got caught. Hello and welcome to So Pretty Workshop. Uh, if you ever been to one of my workshops, you know we like to have fun. We like to have a big time, we like to joke around, play around, and learn a lot. Uh, that's my goal anyway. Um, most people when they sit down to sew and they thread up the machine, they think the first thing that you need to do is pick up the bottom thread. Well, from the top side, that is what you have to do. From the bottom side of the machine, and the very first thing that has to happen is the upper thread has to be actually caught, okay? If you can't pick up bottom thread, it's because your upper thread is not catching. It don't have anything to do with your bobbin, your bobbin case, or the way the upper part of the machine is threaded through the tension discs, or the oil level in the light bulb. You're gonna get all kinds of really crazy answers if you ask, why is my machine not picking up bottom thread? Well, I want to explain a couple of things real quick and uh, try to help some you know, somebody out there once in a while because that's my whole purpose with the Soap Party Workshops is to uh, inform and try to encourage people to buy more vintage sewing machines and keep them from being scrapped because, as you know, these new corporate or these modern corporations, they don't want to sell you something that's going to last. They want to sell you something that's going to uh, run about a six, eight months, maybe a year, however long the warranty is. They have spent a lot of time and a lot of money to make sure that machine lasts just outside of warranty and then dies. Keep dealers in business, keep the corporations in business, and keep those big houseboats running. Um, <clears throat> let's just stick to our vintage machines, okay? When your machine will not pick up the bottom thread, <clears throat> it has nothing to do with your bottom thread. Okay, it has nothing to do with your bobbin, your bobbin case, you feed the hose. Uh, it has to do with the interaction between the needle and the hook or the shuttle. That is what's wrong. Okay, if you uh, if you have your needle in right and you have your thread the right direction through the needle, more than likely you're going to catch your loop. And when you catch your loop, then you're going to get your bottom thread. I want to deal with catching the loop right here. Uh, this is this is what this next little short series of videos is is catching the loop in a variety of machines. First off, all needles, domestic needles. I'm not talking about industrials. Okay, I'm talking about domestic needles, the 15 by one that you go to Joann's and Hobby Lobby and uh, wherever and buy needles. Um, yeah. For, I'm just trying to make sure that I don't mislead anybody. We're talking about domestic machines. You got a smooth side of your needle that coincides or that with a flat at the top and the shank of the needle. On the back side of the needle, you have a groove in the needle, in the any. That's there for a reason. That groove is there, so when this is my quilt piece that I cut with sherry scissors, don't tell her. When you go through a piece of fabric, and the needle does its natural retract, like that right there. Thread the needle right. See that? Got that loop. The reason it made that loop and didn't make one on this side is because that groove. That groove cannot be on this side of the needle because this is where the shuttle passes or the hook catches. Okay, it catches, winds it through, pulls the thread through. Your bottom thread that you would then pull up. Thread your needle on your machine. Don't worry about your bobbin. Don't worry about running through tension discs, take up lever, all that other stuff. Set your thread on the bed of the machine. <clears throat> this is if you're trying to fix a problem of not picking up thread. Don't hold on to the thread, pulling it up this way. The reason you're not is because if you hold on to the thread and pull it up there, the shuttle's going to go right past it. Okay? Always, in any machine, make sure the needle is in right by making sure this groove is opposite the shuttle. Okay? You don't know where that machine has been before you get a hold of it. I have run across machines that the needle bars are in them backwards. Okay? It, you never know what's going to happen. Always make sure the flat flat 
is on the same side that the shuttle of the hook is passing the needle. If you do that and you thread your needle always from the groove side of the needle going through to the smooth side of the needle. There's no exception, okay? That is how a machine has to be threaded. That's how the machine works. That's kind of like the wheel on your car it does go on the roof. It goes on the axle, goes on the hub. That's the only way the car's gonna roll down the road. This is the only way a sewing machine is gonna sew and sew correctly, is threaded that direction with the needle facing the shuttle, the smooth side of the needle facing the shuttle, or the hook. Please keep in mind when I use the term shuttle and hook, they are kind of can be used either way here. Um, whether it be an oscillating shuttle, a rotary shuttle, I mean, an oscillating hook, a rotary hook, a linear shuttle, a, uh, a yeah, I'm even running out. I can't even think of all the different ones right now. The one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people leader shuttle down here between the rivers in Tennessee. Um, that's one you need to find. Uh, it don't matter which machine, it don't matter if it's an 1850 machine or a 2015 machine. They all work the same. They all have to do this very thing. The very first thing that has to happen is the hook or the shuttle has to catch the loop on the smooth side of the needle. If that happens, you're going to catch your bottom thread. Then you can put the machine back together, thread it upright, and see what happens. Um, in the following videos, we're going to have a 1592 Singer, a 1591 Singer, a uh, class 15 uh, clone machine that threads opposite threads uh, left to right where the other machine threads right to left threading right to left thread left to right thread front to back whatever it all depends on where the smooth side of the needle is and where the hook is interacting with the needle you don't just worry about those okay just worry about how that works and then the rest of it gonna come easy okay Watch the rest of the videos. Uh, if, you know, this is a lot easier to explain in video or one-on-one -on -one is even better in a workshop. So, you know, you can always attend a workshop. I'd be glad to show you how to do this. Uh, I have fun. I enjoy being with people. I enjoy doing this, what we do. Um, it's a whole lot more fun than talking to this camera, believe me. Uh, so watch the rest of the videos, subscribe to our channel, go to SoPurdyWorkshops.com and uh, look at our upcoming schedule and see if we're coming to a town near you. Uh, attend the workshop if you can, but uh, we'll play with the with this more sword fighting, okay? Uh, I thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of the videos. Appreciate it. Have a great day. All right, this will be a <coughs> genuine uh, Singer 15 um, machine and what we got is this right here is the hook of course you can see the needle coming down as the machine rotates <coughs> um, the hook re re the hook comes back needle drops you see the needle hole is down here the hook goes past and then it starts coming back I'm not changing direction of the hand wheel I'm actually just turning the hand wheel on in the direction that it would normally turn uh, that's why they call this oscillating. The hook is coming back. And you see right there, the hook is passing on the outside of the machine, I mean of the needle. The eye is below it. Actually, this machine is probably just a little bit low. I was noticing on the timing mark that uh, the needle is, the needle bar is set a little low in this machine. Um, but anyway, the hook passes right here. And then the eye comes on up. You see the eye coming up. I hope you can see this in the video. Then it goes past. See? Comes on up. Also, I want to make mention the side of the needle that is smooth is the side that's facing the hook right here. Uh, so, all right. Okay. It was suggested that I do this video again with uh, the machine threaded. I'm not going to thread the machine. Right now the spool is actually sitting on the bobbin winder spool pin. The thread is coming up to the needle. Um, right up here, I guess you can, can't see it in the video because I ain't going to move the camera. It's going on a tripod. But anyway, it is sitting up there. The needle is threaded and that is it. 
right and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the machine and if you can see right there you can see the thread on the needle and the hook is going to come around and see it grabbed the needle see it grabbed it right there made that little loop and grab that if you cannot make your machine do that right there and you see I did not hold on to the end of the thread when you hold on the thread and pull it <clears throat> pull on it uh, you keep that little loop from being made down at the bottom for the hook to grab if you cannot turn your machine and the hook grab the thread just like it did right there then your machine is never going to pick up the the bottom thread so we've got the bobbin case out of it and everything that has nothing at all to do with picking up the bottom thread if you can't make that uh hook grab the thread right there okay this is a 15 class rotary machine i mean a 15 class machine it's actually a zigzag but it's still a 15 class but watch something here got totally different needles dropping down the hook look the hook is on the back side of the needle in this machine on the back side of it is you're facing the end of the machine and if you notice the groove of the needle is facing us the smooth side of the needle which is the flat on the top of the needle is facing the hook this machine would thread from left to right not right to left like the 15 that we just looked at um, you see right here as the machine st the needle starts up right there the hook is passing just below I mean just above the eye of the needle as the eye passes see hope this is making sense and then of course we swing on around there it goes again on around there it goes again if I had thread in this right here <coughs> it would uh, pick the thread up. All right, <clears throat> now we can go all the way back. This is an 1868 machine. Uh, this is a Wheeler and Wilson. Alan Wilson actually invented the rotary hook. This is uh, what I do with my toothpick I was using as a pointer. Um, all right, this of course is the hook. I'm gonna rotate the machine around. This machine's a little hard to do, one-handed. Um, you can see the needle is going to come down. You can't see it yet, but there it is. There it is behind. All right. Let's see the hook comes around here. Now, this again. Uh, it's funny, I just noticed. <laughs> this evidently has a Florence needle in it. I did not know I had any extra Florence needles. Um, the groove should be on the other side, okay? So forget that the groove in the needle is on this side. <laughs> uh, the same principle here, though. I'm going to rotate this machine. It's kind of hard to do one-handed. Right. See the point of the needle coming down right there. The needle starts back up. The hook is about to pass. Now this one here is awfully low. That's probably because, again, there is a incorrect needle in this machine. Uh, I've had this machine for a couple of years and didn't even realize it had the wrong needle in it because I've never sewed with this one. Um, this one was missing some parts when I got it. But anyway, um, see what's going on. The hook is passing the needle right there. Okay, this is a white VS2. And uh, <clears throat> if you notice, I did not thread the machine. The spool of thread sitting right here. The thread running through the needle. I'm not going to hold on to the end of the thread because it's not necessary. But <clears throat> uh, let's see. It's a little bit above it, but anyway, the, the side of the needle with the groove in it is, you notice when the needle drops down here in just a minute, um, is opposite the where the shuttle is passing. It's just like in the other machines with the hook passing the smooth side of the needle and not the grooved side. Um, the vibrating shuttle machines work the very same way as the others. If you notice right here, machine drops or the needle drops all the way down. And see the thread catching? Thread catching right there. And now 
I can grab a hold of the thread and there it goes and that now of course now I have passed the point <laughs> of picking up picking up lower thread but and there you see I have picked up the bottom thread uh, without without the let's just don't worry about that thread right there actually uh, let's just take the shuttle take the bobbin and thread out how's that so I can demonstrate this one more time show you that it has nothing at all to do with the bobbin having thread in it there it goes there's the same thing I was talking about in the other machines if the machine will not do that right there and the point of the shuttle catch the thread off of the needle then all the other stuff everything else you can do to the machine is is just wasting One time more quick point I want to make uh, lots of times people having <clears throat> th uh, pickup issues and things like that somebody always comments is saying it's out of time this is a Singer 15, the bottom side. Uh, it's also going to apply to a lot of the 15 class clones that I have seen. Let me see this pin right here. All right, that is a pin. This is this is the the shaft. This is actually the shaft that the hook assembly is on. That's a pin driven in that machine. Right down here. Let's see if I can move very carefully. Right there is another one. There is a set screw right here. But that pin right there was drilled at the factory when this machine was timed. Okay? This machine, to be out of time, you're going to have to shear one of these pins. Now, there is no adjustment from here on up. Okay? Whoops. There's no adjustment from right here on up into the machine. Okay? So... Unless you have some really catastrophic failure, I mean, I don't even know what in the world you're going to do that's normally sewing and shear one of these pins. But, if you don't shear one of those pins, when somebody suggests that your machine is out of time because you're not picking up thread, uh, kind of just politely ignore it, okay? Uh, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the time, your machine is not out of time uh, if when we're talking these type machines when you get into a 66 a 99 201 you can slip uh, slip those but I'm talking about these machines now when I say you can slip the other machines it doesn't often happen um, but it is possible but if you break a needle change a needle and the machines not sewing why don't you look at the last thing that happened, which is change the needle.